So this is part two of my Variac upgrade project. The aim of it is to not only take this Variac and give it an output socket and an IEC input socket, which previously just had terminals, but also to add a safety switch and a circuit breaker, although that's not really needed because this is a circuit breaker as well as a safety switch. Uh, but primarily to add one of these multifunction panel meters which show voltage, current, power and energy. And at least voltage wise it seems to be quite accurate. I'm unsure about the current as yet but I've no reason to doubt it as yet. And, but because it, I can't be sure of it, the power and energy are also somewhat in doubt. But for the moment we'll believe it until we know otherwise. Now these are quite nice little meters except for a couple of problems. First of all, uh, the circuitry is driven from the mains via this capacitor and resistor and it requires at least 80 volts AC to operate which is fine in probably most applications for it but in this application where the voltage we're trying to measure could be much less than 80 volts coming out of a variac it's not good enough so what you can do is lift that capacitor out and supply AC before it's gone into the variac so full mains voltage into that capacitor so that the circuitry has all its operating voltage and then the output of the variac will go into the terminal for measuring and then it can go right down to zero volts because the secretary has been powered independently. But the other problem is that this resistor also gets quite hot. I'm not sure what that is. It looks like two watts, maybe three watts, maybe even five watts in somebody's book. But it does get quite hot and I've read that these things sometimes melt. So what I've decided to do is remove the capacitor and the resistor completely and put them on a separate circuit board and increase the power rating of the resistor. While so I'm we've lifted the lid and given the Variac a pulpectomy, take those four feet out, and I've made a, a box to put it in, which is just some 35 by 70 pine and what's that looks like 20 millimeter MDF uh, and then this can live up here those holes can be bolted into there put the cover back on it'll look something like this and an aluminium plate across there where the power meter will sit possibly a switch here for a fan to blow air up through the through the very act if it gets hot maybe even thermostatically controlled who knows you could go quite berserk on it depends how much value you think it's, it's worth um, but I certainly have to get some power outlets so one of those I'll put that on the side here um, unfortunately that won't be able to go in anymore oh well and these RCD and switches I can think of, I can run them horizontally on the other side 70 millimeters should be oh, I've measured 70 millimeters is enough room to do that okay now the planning and foresight department was out when we first decided where to put these screw holes so that one had to come out and replaced by these two and that arm cut in half and a bevel put on it so that now the RCD and circuit breaker can slip in there nicely and the bevel allows access to the switches. I'll stick something in there to pad that out so that the backs of these line up Yeah. so they're lined up and I'll just some 
little block of wood will go in there, you know, some, something like this, it'll stop it moving and pack something in there so that this doesn't flap around. On this side we've butchered in a hole that this power point can go onto. That screw completely clears all the wiring so there's no problem there. There's a little post to hold this guy in. Works quite nicely. Two bolts at the bottom, two screws. This one's got a bit of slop in it so just a couple of bits of packing foam I think will do the trick. Something like that. And I think that'll be pretty good. I've got to jam that one in a bit better. I still have to put a hole here for an IEC socket. I don't want to have a power cord dangling out of this thing. Okay, now we've got hole for an IEC socket. A bit rough, but this whole thing is a bit rough. And we've got a front panel made out of two millimeter, two millimeter sheet of aluminium. Uh, she's a bit tight, but that's normally a good thing, isn't it? However, this is probably a bit too tight. Um, I almost can't get that to go straight. And also it's got a nerf strap for safety. On this, we've added the all the uh, electricals some foots and a spray of clear lacquer so that's nearly nearly done uh, this variac I want the wires to come not to these terminals but to the back of them so that these terminals are free for whatever use so I'm going to put a hole there and have uh, three wires for in, out and neutral to go down into here without having to put anything on the front of this. Moving along a bit further we've got all four earth wires from the IC input, the front panel, this will go to the Variac casing and the output jack, uh, power point, all tied together there. A terminal block with the AC coming in from the RCD. These three will go up into the Variac and they're the two outputs to the power point. And wires will come in here and go to go to points on this. We've also gouged out this hole in the Variac. It's, those lugs will bolt on to these terminals on the back of the very front cover and here's the connection of the wires from the terminal block coming up through a grommet to neutral active in very out and that all fits reasonably snugly In there, that earth will go to that bolt. Okay, time to work on the electronics board. So, just to summarize and clarify, this is the circuit to the Variac uh, mains in. There's the, the winding with the wiper that can move along it. The output of that goes through a circuit breaker to these terminals, and there's a voltmeter across it. The little multifunction panel meter thingy that I've got has four terminals and two of them are broken by the sense resistor for the current. Probably on the neutral side you'd put that and on the active side there's the voltage sense but it also supplies the, via this capacitor and resistor, supplies the power to the circuitry in there which the problem being there of course is that the incoming voltage has to be at least the 80 volts that, that needs and you know, for a lot of applications that doesn't matter but in the case of a Variac you've got less than 80 volts often so you need to do something like this and this is what I've done similar to this in this case uh, 
cut that connection there and take it straight over to full mains input AC. So regardless of so this thing's got its power supply, regardless of what voltage is coming out of the variacum. The other problem with this of course is that this gets hot, this resistor, so I've decided to move that off board along with the capacitor and the 470k resistor that I've discovered is sitting across that capacitor. So I'll put that on a separate board and the circuit for that is this. This stuff here. I split the 100 ohm resistor into two 5 watt resistors to get both 10 watt power dissipation capacity and to increase the voltage or rather decrease the voltage across each uh, resistor, thus increasing the voltage rating of the overall resistor. Similarly with that 470k I've done two 220k's in series across the capacitor. This circuit here is for a indicator lamp to show that there's voltage present even if that voltage is you know, below 10 volts. So whatever goes in here, 10 volts and above, turns this lead on via a constant current sink source circuit. Uh, this TIP50 is a 400 volt transistor. Uh, again for voltage rating I'll put two resistors in series. I did try this with a higher current lead, a green or yellow or something, uh, at 16 to 20 milliamps and this thing gets way too hot in that situation so I'll change that to a blue lead which needs far less current and upped all the resistances and now that doesn't get warm at all and it doesn't need a heat sink. So I put that all in, and that all sits on the back of the panel meter. So the final circuit is this. Incoming mains, circuit breaker, safety switch, a switch on the front panel which I'd remove if I did it again as I would with that safety switch, uh, the circuit breaker because the safety switch is also a circuit breaker. There's a Beriac, it's internal circuit breaker and voltmeter going to my power indicator thing, the voltage indicator that I just described and there's the panel meter measuring the voltage and the current with its separate supply also on the little board with this running off the incoming mains. A switch on the output and then to a final uh, power point mounted on the side of the thing. So here's my PCB design 65 millimeters by 35. The power supply for the voltmeter comes in on this terminal block. Two 5 watt resistors. There's the capacitor from the internals of the meter couple of uh, 220Ks in series for voltage rating to replace the 470K that's on the board. Here's the constant current sync circuit, TIP50, 400 volt transistor. Uh, power supply comes in here from the output of the Variac and these two go to the LED on the front panel. This is a bit of late breaking news that uh, I've, I've discovered since I made the original video that there's an error in that circuit for the lead indicator and uh, this, this is an update to fix it. The video was already published but fortunately nobody watched it so um... <laughs> why, why, why doesn't anyone watch my videos? The previous circuit was far too brutal on the LED. There was no... Res this resistor and diode that I've now put in weren't there so that it was possible for this transistor to dump into the lead more current than it could ever possibly handle if, if, if a glitch occurred. So I've added this current limiting resistor and a Zener. Probably the Zener is not needed, just a current limiting resistor. Um, I, I did have that in the original design, somehow convinced myself that it wasn't needed, but of course one little glitch in this transistor will vaporise the diode, the, the lead. Uh, so. Because it's a constant, cur constant current source, uh, the resistance can be a very wide range. It'll, it'll deliver about 2 milliamps into the lead 
almost regardless of the resistance. 100k is probably the upper limit. It should probably be a bit less than that, but I couldn't be bothered trying other values. That certainly works. It, it does raise the, raise the minimum um, voltage to get some light out, decent light out of lead by about 5 volts to 15 volts. So maybe 47k would be better. Could even go down to 22k, but in that case I'd probably still leave that uh, Zena diode there, maybe make it a 1 watt job. Uh, to, just to absorb any surges of energy and particularly lead. Uh, yeah, seems to be working fine. There it is. Been on for many, many hours and I've played around with it quite a bit and the lead hasn't burned out yet. So I think that's a good fix. Uh, we now resume normal programming. Which I've done here. Uh, I've changed the whatever that resistor is, 5 watts, 3 watts, 2 watts, or 2 5 watt resistors in series to give the 100 ohm resistance uh, in series because that will also improve the voltage rating of the resistors and that's 10 watts there, that should be ample in terms of power capacity there's that original capacitor and there's two 220k resistors in series replacing that 470k up there Again, in series to improve the voltage rating of the resistors. This other stuff here is for this LED, which is supposed to come on whenever the voltage coming out of the VAC is anything above about 10 volts. So I know that there's power coming out of there and to be careful. Another error is... Uh, trying to get that in there so there's no room for the wires on the terminal block well there actually there is but it'd be quite a squeeze so uh, and that circuitry is all being mounted on the back of this voltmeter panel and rather than trying to replace this terminal block in backwards I've just decided to wire directly to the board now only the the two neutrals would go to the either side of the current sense resistor need to have any current rating so I've stuck a couple of uh, con connection posts in there and then soldered these onto the posts heat shrunk them and then tied them together so that's a pretty good secure connection the other two are for the input power coming from this resistor capacitor arrangement on this wire and this one is for the voltage to be measured coming out of the variac. They used to be connected together, but I've cut them separate there. And this one that supplies the power from here goes across to where, where is it? This yellow one goes across to there where this resistor used to be, which is effectively the output of this resistor capacitor combination so this will go to resistor and capacitor this will go to the voltage to be measured and the neutral from source to load will go via this current sense resistor okay I'm just about to do a full dress rehearsal uh, but it's perfectly obvious now that I've drastically underestimated how much bulk all this wiring takes up uh, so something is going to have to be done about that maybe I'll be moving this terminal block but the solution might end up having to be that to change these two top pieces of wood to from 70 millimeters to 90 millimeters high to get the room under there it wouldn't be a bad thing because it leaves room for a bigger fan on the back uh, but yeah a bit of a balls up but uh, we'll just try it like this anyway I've done a quick continuity check to make sure that things run to only to where they should be running I'm going to be using that toaster as a dummy load okay fingers crossed let's see if we get any magic smoke okay Power on. Meter works. We have humming from somewhere. 
let's turn up some volts lead comes on from fairly low voltage from about 10 but good and bright from anything that would you would feel right up to 286 turn on the output and there poster okay 2.3 amps let's take it up to 240 250 volts okay it all seems to work except for there's no bloody room for the wiring <laughs> okay I'll see if I can come up with some way of fixing that without having to change these top pieces of wood all right so to get around that balls up of no room for wiring I'll move that terminal block over to there gives me just enough room I've added a bit more bit of protection along the front there so no finger poking can happen from the bottom that'll go there so what would I do if I was doing this again well I would increase the height of these so that I've got more room maybe make them 90 millimeters instead of 70 I would forget about this switch here not needed and then I could move these other things across a little bit and have a bit more room to wouldn't be so tight against each other and against the sides of the box I would forget about this circuit breaker because well it's redundant because well it's a circuit breaker in the, in the variac but the safety switch is an RCBO which means it's also got an as well as a safety switch it's also got a circuit breaker in it but I'm not going to do it again <laughs> so this is how it stays I'll just put it all together now I probably won't put anything on the back I mean, there's, there's not really anywhere you can easily stick your fingers in but to electrocute yourself at this stage you'll just see how it goes and maybe I'll put a uh, some sort of a fan arrangement on a back panel once I've played with this thing a little bit so there she is the finished beast except for nothing on the back yet but So, one last check that she still works. Okay, the circuit breaker and safety switch are on, so just have to apply power here. The meter comes on, and we've got one volt output. And I'll wind it up. 12, we're getting some glow out of the lead. Volts here, volts here. Hundred and forty ish. Apply power to the toaster. Eight hundred and eighty-six watts. Now this is a bit of overkill. I mean, to get power from here to here, there's got to be seven things on: circuit breaker, safety switch that thing, that circuit breaker, the knob, that switch, and the switch on the power point, seven all up. So yeah, I would at least eliminate this one. And the um, redundant circuit breaker, that'll, that'll knock it down to five. We've got hots in there. So works, 880, yeah, about 800. Oh, more like about 800 watts I think it's reading a bit high that'll make it glow brightly won't leave it on for too long um, yeah so this this is on at any point that there's a voltage that you could that you could feel on the output what about 40 volts is it? so if that's on don't touch, you'll get a shock. Okay, that about wraps it up.
pretty ugly looking thing, but oh well. Doesn't have to be beautiful, just have to work. Catch you later. Good day. Hmm, that was quick, wasn't it? Um, stock press, final thoughts. Just thinking about this a little bit more. If I was going to do this again, and especially if I was going to put in the cooling fan idea and the geared motor drive that I spoke of, I don't think I'd do it this way at all. I think I'd uh, dispense with this case altogether, take the guts of the Variac out, put it in another box, put a new face plate across the top, a bit wider, and move the panel meters and switches and stuff over to here. Maybe transfer that indicator plate across as well. Uh, probably still made out of wood because, well, although it's not my preferred choice for enclosure for an electric, electronic instrument, um, it does keep the weight down and the box that this would need, it would be a, an unusual size and shape. It might be a bit hard to get off the shelf and so unless you're good with metal work, uh, it's probably easier to just make it out of wood. Um, it would certainly be a lot easier to wire up so it would be just a little bit wider maybe there, same depth, same height as this unless you also want to put in the gearing for a motor drive it might might end up almost as high as this anyway but it would be a hell of a lot easier to make. So yeah, so that's what I'd do. Catch you later, again.